Right guys, what's good, what's going on? Welcome back to another video and welcome to, I can't believe I'm saying this, episode 7 of our reactions to season 2 of Heartstopper. Now, as always, before we get started with today's video, I've got to give a huge shout out to the wonderful community over on Patreon. Patreon is the only place that you will ever get to watch all of these videos completely unedited. That is season one and two of Heartstopper, Young Royal, Scum, Looking, plus a ton of Patreon exclusive content, incredible community chats. And on top of all of that, videos always go live on Patreon before they head over to YouTube. So if you want to join us over there for all of that exclusive access, the links for that, they're down in the description. Now, episode six. I know I've said this after every episode, but I think you'll all agree after seeing my reaction to the last episode was a whirlwind. It is by far, of all of the episodes I've ever reacted to, the episode that got me the most. Like, I was gone. Gone, gone, gone. I'm super emotionally moved by that. And I'm nervous because everyone keeps saying that um, the rest of the episodes are going to really kill me even more. So, you know, I smashed out a couple of episodes over the last couple of days. I want to get the last couple done today. So I don't know if I'm emotionally ready for this, but it's fine. I'll be able to escape in Paris next week. So. <laughs> right. So episode six obviously finished off with the end of the Paris trip. We had you know, Tara's big birthday party. We had um, a, a huge kind of almost climax of, of Isaac's kind of ace arrow storyline with him and James kissing in the corridor. And um, then we had obviously the wonderful scene from the book where Charlie, uh, when Nick comes out to the whole room, that is him that gave Charlie the hickey. So like so much stuff happened and, you know, you end with like the end of the Paris trip, they're traveling home and then Charlie sees it on Nick's Instagram post of them both that someone's commented on it. Like, Oh, is it true? You guys are dating or something like that. So, you know, word is already getting around that they're that they're together so this is actually where for those that may not know this is actually where volume three finishes so i'm very interested to see like what the next two episodes are made up of if we start delving into volume four or if this is kind of new storyline i know there was stuff said about a prom so that's obviously going to be a part of it and that isn't in the book so yeah uh got my tissues Let's go get emotional. Let's jump on in. Da, 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 ba, ba. Let's jump on in. Stop. Um, girl, are you away? <laughs> it's almost midday. You know Granny would have a heart attack if she knew I was letting your girlfriend sleep over. Granny would have a heart attack if she knew I was a lesbian. <laughs> no sleepovers tonight. You should probably go, but I don't want you to. This is so cute, I can't. I'm gonna go into the comments on that one. So cute. Even, I've just seen a screenshot of what comes up next, so we'll talk about that after. Like, little details like this, like, this photo is almost perfectly identical to, like, the photo that they take in the book. So, like, it's just... I know I keep saying it, but it's all these small details for me that really make this show above and beyond every other show. Oh my god, she got in! I knew she'd get in. Of course she was going to get in. Tao's literally on cloud nine. <laughs> Good mood. Anything I should know about? Maybe me and Elle decided to get together. <laughs> the perfect girl for my perfect boy. Oh, she makes me so happy. We've all been waiting for this day. Oh, to have a mum that's actually excited by your relationships, not disappointed. <laughs> Dad's coming to visit. Sick. Could we invite Charlie over? That's a lovely idea. How come Nick gets to invite someone and I don't? Do you have a girlfriend you'd like to invite, David? <laughs> Mic drop from Olivia Coleman. Fuck you, David. You only get to invite people to dinner when you're not a piece of shit. You should have come. It was really fun. My summer is for sleeping, not visiting old museums. <laughs> yes! No! Mm. Get over here! We've been invited to Nick's for a dinner party. Wow, mum will love that. <laughs> what do you mean? She's not exactly Nick's biggest fan, is she? Well, Why? maybe this will help her see how great he is. Ben, fuck off. Ben Hope 999, as he's tragic and there's an emergency. I love her phone case. L like, just like the most amazing friendship group. I love how, I love how he rephrased that. 
I can't really articulate like what I feel like that means, but I just feel like he almost thought about it a little bit more and decided to kind of put it from that perspective as opposed to be like, are you leaving us? I think it's just really nice. Shows a little bit of growth in him. Love that. I guess she's just playing it safe. <laughs> I can't with all this. Oh my God. That purple smoke's almost giving like, like poison, toxic vibes. You know, is that like foreshadow? I say foreshadowing, like knowing what we know from the books. Like, is that foreshadowing like her toxic home life? Like, I'm so nervous about that storyline. That's gonna really, really get to me. That's a cute little town. What town is this? Yeah, well, you do your thing. Tell me what town that is. Okay. Guys, I'm gonna catch up with you in a bit. I said I'd meet up with James. They're gonna kiss. Bye. 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 Oh, bless him. I'm not ready for another episode of this, I don't think. For Pom? I don't know, maybe? Look, the lining matches my dress. I'm already getting really emotional. This is dangerous, guys. <laughs> All right, okay. I think I'm going to go to prom. Yeah? Would you like to be my prom date? Really? I don't know, maybe it's stupid. No, it's not. It's beautiful is what it is. And I don't want to wear a matching suit. <laughs> <laughs> Good, good. This oh my god, Elle, slay. I don't think it's the what. What's the deal with this exhibition thing anyway? You got in, didn't you? <laughs> don't don't tell I bit squeal. I don't know how Tao will take it. I just haven't decided yet. Okay. I used to love those, like, I don't know if you do it in other countries, but like very much when I was at school, it was like a Saturday was all about like catching the bus into town with your friends and just like walking around the shops and just like messing around and stuff. I used to absolutely love those days. <laughs> Oh my god, I love it. Amazing. I don't know if I can afford it. Oh my god. Got some? No, 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 no. Oh my god. I can't deal with having like an emotional breakdown in every single scene. Oh. I'm genuinely like, do I step away from this today? Because I feel like I'm going to be a bloody mess. Oh, why are they just such a lovely group of people? Oh, it's just wonderful. Hey, sorry, some man just brought like 15 of those Penguin Cough Band classics. <laughs> <laughs> Love oh. this in the background there. <laughs> Such good foreshadowing. So I'm guessing you don't feel the same about me then. I don't know how I'm supposed to feel when I have a crush on someone. You know, I read all these books where people fall in love and I still have absolutely no idea. I thought that I might feel that way about you, but then we kissed and I just knew that I didn't. I think there might be something wrong with me. There's nothing <sighs> wrong with you. You probably just haven't found the right person yet. Oh, James. Yeah. Oh, he thinks the bloody world of him, doesn't he? It just sits really, really close to my heart, this storyline, because of what I spoke about in the Alice video about, like, feeling broken for so many years and seeing how, like, everyone else around me felt. And... Just spending so many years thinking, like, I mean, firstly being gay and then being asexual, but, like, why am I not normal? Why do I not feel the same way that other people feel? And certainly from my own journey, it was very much like, you know, why do I not feel this way? Oh, it's because I'm gay. That's why I haven't been able to feel a certain way. And then, you know, coming out and transitioning into having boyfriends and then still feeling the same and being like, why the fuck am I broken? Why why am I not the way that I should be? Um, so yeah, that just that hits super hard. Did something happen? Okay. Something definitely happened. Can you guys just shut up? Look, I get that you don't think my life is interesting unless I have some kind of romantic drama going on, but I'm sorry to break it to you. I don't like him back. I'm sorry. I'm fine. I just, I don't want to talk about it. Oh my God. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely speechless. I knew from the moment that I read last year that you know, through Isaac's character they would be navigating down an Ace Arrow storyline path that it would be really, really raw for me to watch it. And it's, um, I kind of thought through the process of making the Alice video pre to season two that I'd be like, okay, I can do this now. It still hits really fucking hard. <laughs> She looks unreal. Oh, I love 
your piece. And I can't wait to see what art you make when we start this in September. You got in? Yeah. Oh my god! Oh no, Tao. Ow. Hey, how are you? Oh, that's the, the worst possible thing that could have happened in that moment. Shit. I just love that Isaac's always got a book. It's my one. Really? I love it. Thanks. What's it about? Basically about my experience being aromantic and asexual. Like, being in a world where <laughs> romance and sex are prized above everything else when you don't feel those forms of attraction. Growing up, feeling that something about you is different, but you don't have the words to describe what that is. But then, freedom. The euphoria <laughs> of freeing yourself from those pressures and expectations. I can't tell what's getting to me more, whether it's the, the beautiful representation, the perfect description of what it feels like to be asexual and what I can imagine what it feels like to be aromantic or the fact that it's put across in art form which is something that I'm so passionate about myself and how I feel like for me art is so healing and that's why I create the videos that I create is because I feel like art heals everything and all of that's just <sighs> manifested in front of Isaac I just think it's wonderful and I feel like that's going to be the first time he's going to go, that's what I am. And it's that same moment in Loveless, if you've read it, with Georgia and Sunil when you know he kind of explains about himself and she goes like, ah, like it's really that penny drop moment. And it, for me, I didn't have that moment until reading Alice's books this past year. So I just think it's so wonderful that, you know, young little gays or, you know, young kids like me who may be... You know, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, who feel, who are feeling the way that I felt at that time in my life and may happen across Heartstopper and go, that's what I am. Because fuck me, I wish I'd had that. I really do. This is so moody. Oh God. Literally nothing I ever do is good enough. So hard. I didn't know you were coming. Yeah, that was my friend. So you guys can't tease me about being the token ally anymore and now that's. <laughs> I'm bisexual, so... <laughs> I fucking love it. I love it. Slay. Zaha's not really had, like, too much... I guess she doesn't really in the in the books either, but, like, hasn't had too much in terms of, like, storyline. But, like, I love that everything she says is just an absolute slay. Great addition. Interesting. She Very probably interesting. Leave. But you'll miss how it's painting. If I leave it any longer, I'll just make it more angry. You still coming to prom tomorrow? Of course. Got our matching outfits. I just love them. Beautiful humans. I feel like I'm there. I'm, like, like emotionally there. Now, before the big reveal, Elle, would you like to say a few words about your piece? Okay. Why am I welling up again? <laughs> there have been a lot of changes in my life over the last couple of years, but with this piece, I guess I wanted to capture a place that holds a lot of happy memories, even in the darker times, somewhere I always felt safe. One, two, three! <laughs> yeah. Why is everything in this episode? Oh. These are the most, like, actual tears I've cried over a TV show. And that feels nice is to let them fall. <sighs> I just, I feel like she has so perfectly encompassed the whole show there. Like, she said, you know, through, you know, times where things have been maybe a bit rough for her. Like, this, like, I've got the, the painting is actually, like, up on the screen now. Like, that's been her safe space is, you know, Isaac, Tao and Charlie. And that's such a beautiful metaphor for how this show is the safe space for all of us. I, and I, I'm sure you will all agree, like, how she feels about those guys is how we feel while watching this show. And it's just... I actually don't know if I could love this show any more than I... And I'm sure that radiates across my content, but, my God, if this is what I'm, like, just watching this show, what am I going to be like in Paris? <laughs> I'm going to be a mess. <sighs> okay, must stop crying. I'm going to meet some friends tonight. They're going to be like, are you okay, hun? <laughs> I know you're probably annoyed that I didn't tell you I got in. I'm not annoyed. Please don't base your decisions on how I feel. All I care about is you being happy. And wherever you are, I still want to be with you. Mm. But I also still haven't decided yet. I may still stay at Higgs. She's going to go to Lambert, though, surely. Hey. The fuck is he doing here? What are you doing here? I, I, I need to talk to you. There's nothing to talk about. I just want to apologise properly. I don't know if I'm ready for this. 
What I will say, though, is in that moment, I absolutely love that Nick it didn't, like, push Charlie behind him, but he, like, stood in front of Charlie, like, as, like, the protective figure in that moment, and I just think that's beautiful. Please, just take so me then out. So just fuck off. I'm not going back to Truem for sixth form, so really hate me after this. You'll never see me again. Good girl, bye. Go on, then. I'm a messed up person, Charlie. Mm-hmm. I liked you. You know that. Don't you? I know what, I was a piece of shit. I really liked you. If I just had more time, I want to be like you two. My parents would never accept who I really am. I'm sorry no, for everything. I'm sorry. I just wanted something good. You were something good. Do you remember the first time you kissed me? You didn't even ask. You didn't pause to wonder whether it was what I wanted. And I went along with it because I had a crush and I didn't know any better. I didn't realize that you had all the control. When I eventually did realize, I thought, this must be what I deserve. Someone taking whatever he wants from me whenever he wants. Treating me like I'm nothing the rest of the time. And now whenever anything good happens in my life, there's a little voice in the back of my mind telling me I'm worthless and that I don't deserve it. And now you want me to forgive you so you can feel better about yourself. I'm glad you realized what you did was wrong, but you don't get to ambush me into forgiving you. Sorry doesn't make up for everything you did to me. I really hope you become a better person so you don't hurt anyone else. But I don't want to be there to see that happen. I don't want to see you ever again. <sighs> I'm glad you're just in a very emotional place at the moment, guys. <laughs> that was... <sighs> I wonder how many shots in this video are just going to be of me staring off out my window with tears rolling down my face. <sighs> I'm really trying not to get too emotional about it, but I'm clearly not doing a very good job. Wow. There we go. There's that. Um, if I wasn't, like, emotionally broken by that scene, I would have given Charlie a standing ovation there. Um, I will openly admit that I was... Um, a little bit disappointed in the last episode when we didn't get the full Charlie shutting Harry down moment, and I now understand why we didn't, because it was moved to this place instead. And I just think that was absolutely fucking wonderful, absolutely everything that he said there. The bit that really, really broke me was the part where he said, like, how, you know, Ben just taking what he wants from Charlie, and that's what Charlie deserves, and now any time something good happens to him, he has, the, it was that part, any time something good happens to him, he has that little voice in the back of his head, I just, that for me is why this is so powerful, it is, like, how those actions of Ben's, which he probably thought was harmless, and okay, and other people may look at as, you know, he's just a kid, or, you know, he came from a messed up home, or, fuck all of that look how that's now affected charlie and how we now know will affect charlie through the rest of this story and possibly for the rest of charlie's life all because one person treated him like he was a piece of shit just ugh. and everything ben said there it was just making me boil with rage like i'm sorry i don't give a fuck about how much you were discovering yourself or how your parents won't accept you as bi or gay or whatever you are. None of these reasons are a good enough excuse to treat other people like shit, ever. So hopefully that is the last that we see of Ben then. If he said that he's um going to a different sick form, I would happily not see him in the storyline again. Happily. But that does very much explain why Harry's taken like a bit of a backseat in this season. And honestly, I'm kind of glad. I feel like this storyline was more important than the Harry storyline. Like, yes, Harry was... A dick last season and you know we had those moments but i feel like this for charlie's story was a really important storyline to tell so i'm very very grateful that this was told oh and we're like halfway through the episode so that's great so let's see how much i can cry for the rest of this episode shall we because it's already been like three or four times great love that let me have some water so i'm hydrated so i've got something to cry out we won't miss you but bash we'll probably miss you do we need to pretend to be platonic BFFs? I mean, yeah, maybe just for now. But I'm gonna tell him about us tonight. Don't put pressure on it, Nick. You can do it. I'm here for you, mate. <laughs> Not just call me mate. Pal, bro. Supportive straight <laughs> friend. Charlie. Dad, we're home. Ah, Nick. Et ton ami, uh... Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. Good to see you again. Do you want to lay the table, Sarah? Oh, you are a good boy. Charlie. How's it been since he got here? It's been fine. He doesn't have to know, sweetheart. Mm. He's got no right to know. You don't owe him a thing. Ain't that the damn truth? I'm not doing it for him. I'm doing it for me. Guys, I can't. I don't want to cry again. 
Coming. <laughs> Come on, Charlie, you, you got this. My job, it keeps me very busy. Nick's face. Dad, has Nick told you how he met Charlie? Don't fucking start, David. Like, as if David has the audacity to do this, not just in front of his own parents, but also in front of Charlie's. Like, just sums up David as a person. Dick. Head. From one dickhead to another, in, across two scenes, from Ben to David. We've gotten rid of one, maybe we can get rid of another one in this episode. Charlie joined the rugby team. Oh, you play rugby, Charlie. I'm not very good. And Nick was obsessed with getting Charlie to join. Wonder why. What is your problem? Oh, she's gonna destroy him. It's a very attractive sport to women. Oh, give Have it a rest. Have you boys find girlfriends? No, I guess not. There's still time. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure, Nick. What? What is people's obsession with that? I, I know I kind of ranted about this a little bit in the last episode when he said that, but like, what is society's obsession with kids being in relationships or being sexualized or and like, I just don't get it. I will never understand it. Just fucking leave them alone. It's too interested in looking for girlfriends, really. Don't you dare. Oh my God, Tori, I fucking love you. Why do you always do this? I'm just trying to help. Sorry, this is ridiculous. Oh my God. Dad. Charlie's my boyfriend. Surprise. I'm bi, he's gay, and I was actually really stressed out about how I was gonna tell you. But you know what? I don't care what you think about it anymore. Cause you don't care to even see us more than two times a year. And you know, every time I do see you, I always think this is the time when you might actually take an interest in my life. You never do. So if you don't care, then I don't care either. Oh my fucking God. And I don't know why you're acting like you are 10 years old, but your bullying just doesn't affect me anymore because quite simply, I do not care. I like who I am. I like my life. Maybe you should stay with dad next time. Oh my God. Like, I've welled up a little bit, but I'm more happy than sad or, like, emotional. That was just fucking brilliant. Everything he said there was pitch perfect. Oh, God. Speechless. I'm either speechless or crying in this episode. There's not, I'm not really giving much. Sorry, guys. Just wonderful. The bit that really resonates most with me is the bit where he's, like... Every time he sees, every time I see you, I hope that this is the time. And I'm probably, I'm like, I've just picked out key phrases here. I hope this is the time that you'll take an interest in my life kind of thing. And that just resonates so much because I remember thinking the same. Like when I've done a lot of kind of like therapy and my own kind of healing work around like my upbringing, my family life. Like one thing that always came up for me was like how I never felt like my family cared about my life there was never any interest from my family around like my schooling or like my homework or anything like that or like any extra extracurricular activities or any like there was ne never any of that so i kind of resonate on that level with like always that wanting but always being disappointed but i just think oh that was just so wonderful from nick and kit what a performance i'm by he's gay brilliant just articulated it yeah another chef's kiss i think i've chef's kiss in every single episode so far oh david be quiet we've heard quite enough from you thank it's you nick that's making a scene you have not grown up into the men i had hoped you would be david barely see your children <laughs> yes sarah no you can't say anything i mean charlie's mum and dad must be like do 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 <laughs> we've all been there right that's like when you you go out to to lunch or to dinner like with that couple that always end up in an argument and you're just like so <laughs> like it's all just kicking off but i'm so glad it is because david deserves it nick's dad deserves it fuck them all drag them all for all i care okay i actually think i am didn't mean for it to happen that way but i'm felt good to say it i bet it did Do you want to hug anyway they are just wonderful well that went well <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I'm pleased you said what you said, especially to your dad. I needed to hear it. Mm. He's not very good dad, is he? No, he's not. I doesn't care. I wish I understood, but I don't. I think it's a very sad way to exist. Olivia and Kit combination is just a match made in fucking heaven. It's acting perfection. Leaving then? Yeah. Nick, uh, I'm sorry. Mm. I, I want to be better. Do well, you? Tell it then. Don't just say it. Dad, you're going? Yeah. Got to head into London before it gets too late. Call me when you get back to Edinburgh. Huh? Glasgow. Oh, yeah. Mm. Glasgow, yeah. Maybe David will now realise his alliances are wrong. It was nice to meet your boyfriend. Well, I, I don't really understand these things, but it seems like a very nice young man. Bye, Dad. I almost feel like with stuff like that, like I've I spent a lot of years in my childhood. I mean, partially because my the rest of my family was fucking horrendous. But like beating myself up around the fact that I never met my dad. I don't know who he is. Um, you know, I've been told a few things about him, whether it's true, who knows at this point. But I used to beat myself up a lot about that. And I'm sure there are other people watching this video who have grown up in single parent households where, you know, you spend your whole life longing and wishing and you know, wondering what if, you know. But then I watch stuff like that and I'm like, maybe it was easier to 
just not have something rather than have a really shit version of something like Nick's got there, like just having a really shit dad who can't show you any kind of enthusiasm or compassion or empathy or anything. Like, your son's just told you that he's bisexual and he's got a boyfriend and has just flipped at you because you clearly don't care enough and your response is... If there are any dads watching this, especially if you have queer sons, please just support them and show them love and give them a fucking hug when they need it. Jesus. Drama queen boyfriend's influence. That's it. You are a pathetic little man. <laughs> Talk about my brother like that again and I'll end you. <laughs> Tory Spring, everyone. Tory Spring. Oh, there's a reason why me and Tori are birthday twins. Absolute slay. Phenomenal. Love it. A, a perfect part of volume four there. Just plucked out, plopped in. Fuck you, David. You are a pathetic little man. I'm really sorry about all the drama. Oh. oh. We are very used to drama in our house. Yeah. He must care for Charlie very deeply. He's a nice boy when he's not distracting you from your coursework. And maybe we could have him and Sarah around in a few weeks? Yeah. Okay, well, that was growth. We'll take that. We'll take that from Charlie's mum. Don't like the way that she said it, but what she said was was pretty nice. So we'll take it. We'll take it. So, problem tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Green together? Yeah. Like, together, together. Yeah, don't you want to? Charlie didn't Did they have much. the island last season? I feel like they didn't. I just heard that right, didn't I? She said Charlie didn't eat very much. This is the end of CL Volume 3, when Nick's in the car ride back from um, the coach after Paris. She looks amazing. Well, this explains a lot, doesn't it? Go to Tara's house. They'll support you. That is such a powerful image. It's mad, isn't it? Like, they told us, and obviously we knew from reading the books, but they told us that season two would be so much darker than season one, and it really has so much darker. It's dealing with so many issues, but dealing with it so well. Oh my god, I'm so glad that we're delving into this storyline with Darcy, because again, I feel like it's something that a lot of kids go through, and to see it up on screen will mean a lot to them. I just want to say, like, if you're a if you're a parent or you're a prospective parent, if you are not going to love and support your child through absolutely anything and everything, just don't have kids. We don't need more parents like you. I'm like proper venting now because I'm like, this is bringing up so many fucking emotions in me. But like, if your daughter, I, I don't know, I'm assuming her family does know about her in terms of her being a lesbian, but like, if your daughter feels comfortable and feels wonderful wearing a suit to her prom, you fucking let her wear a suit to her prom. You support that and you love that and you encourage that. Like, it's just that simple. And if that's not how you're going to parent, then just don't parent at all because you don't deserve to have kids. And there are plenty of people in the world who would love to have a kid who can't, who would support their child in that way. <sighs> so thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Sorry, I just had to get that off my chest. Um, Well, that was an episode, guys. Um, You already got your money's worth with that one with... Uh, you know, paid for that in tears. Lots of tears. I apologise if you can hear my housemate's on a, on a video call upstairs. He's quite the businessman and I'm here crying to Heartstopper. So I know which one of us is winning in life. <laughs> but oh my God, what an episode. So much to take in. My boy Isaac, I'm so happy that he's just had his aha moment in terms of like his Ace Arrow storyline and seeing someone explain like about being Ace or Arrow to him and him smiling just is such a penny drop moment and it's going to be really beautiful to see how him, how he navigates that through this last episode and then through next season. I really, really hope James stays in season three because I love him and I, I really, I hope that they become like gay BFFs. And like they're there to support each other, and I do. Oh, I just think it would be wonderful if we see that because I absolutely love James and I love them together. So I just hope that they that we still get that kind of loving storyline in there. The whole Darcy situation is wild, and I'm very nervous to see how it plays out. But I just hope that she knows that she's surrounded by so many people who love and support her, and she'll be able to kind of reach out for any of that support at any time. So I'm, I'm sure she knows that, but I hope she does. 
And then Nick coming out to his dad and kind of really owning that situation, I just thought was so beautifully and eloquently handled and just wonderful. Guys, I don't think I'm ready to watch this last episode. I feel like it's going to absolutely break me. And I'm very scared about that. Very, very scared. But right, guys, that is it for today's video. If you would like to see the completely unedited version of this reaction with me crying my fucking eyes out at every given opportunity, <laughs> then you can only find that over on Patreon and the links for that are in the description below. But yeah, guys, thank you again from the bottom of my heart for all the love and support. I know I say it every episode, but with how much support we're getting over on YouTube and like the amount of subscribers that we're we're now getting and the amount of Patreons we now have on Patreon and just all of it is just so overwhelming and so wonderful and mind-blowing so I just I thank you all for loving art I know I got very emotional about like Isaac kind of having that aha moment through a piece of art and that's what art means to me and I, I appreciate you guys coming here to support my art and my creations and I yeah I just thank you because that truly does mean the world to me and that's all I want in in life so yeah thank you all so so much but yeah that is it for today's video guys and until next time I will catch you in a few